All right, everyone, we are here with a very, very special guest. We are joined by the one and only one of our closest friends, <laughs> Donnie Bananas. Woo! Woo! Round of applause. All right. We're going to put that in now, in post, okay? To give background to the closest friend introduction, because people might be like, what? You guys are close friends with Johnny Bananas? Once upon a time, we did do a show yep. with Johnny. My travel show, first look. Yeah. And he, room. he labeled us as his best friends, and we maybe w met one time before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I worked yeah, fast. Like couple. one or two times before that. But honestly, we had a good laugh about that because we were talking about <laughs> it when we were in Fiji with some of the Peacock people that were uh -huh. around, and we were like, I don't know if you guys all know this, but we're actually best friends with the Giant yeah. Bananas. It's one of those things you just know. Check out our episode mm -hmm. of First It's like look. love at first sight. It's like you just know you guys are like my twin flames. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. we all knew that we clicked and then we became your best friends. Yeah. First and then look. you guys, and then you guys changed the offices, redecorated the place and forgot about me. Yeah. yeah. It's been, it's actually been a little bit since you've been in here. It has been a little it's bit. It's been a little bit since you've been on a season of the yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah, true. It's also, we feel like, um, you may be our most, like our guests that we've had on the most amount of times. I think he's maybe. gotta be up okay. there. Okay, I gotta up, be up there. You're he's gotta up be there. up there. If we did the stats, you're definitely up there. Yeah. You live in Florida though, uh -huh. so you know, not it's when you're in New York City. Yeah. But we wanted to have you on when Traders was on season two of Traders. Oh really? I, I that I must. We did. That invite we went must back have gotten lost we in the mail. We went back forth in, in the DM. Yeah. We were voted off so quick. I mean, I've, <laughs> unfortunately, I was we murdered. Got, First of all, we were not voted off. I was murdered. You were murdered. You were murdered off we were like, Traitors. what could he have to say about the season? He was barely there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, actually. <laughs> okay, I actually said and did more in my three days that I was there than most. Of, I I got them nominated for five Emmys. Were you single handedly? Just you. Just me. <laughs> I they're now up for five Emmys because of my seventy two hours of amazing television. Were you so pissed when you got murdered off yes, traders? Very. Because that show is incredible. Um it was like such a cool new experience for me. And it was like my opportunity to kind of take everything that I had, you know, learned over the years on the challenge. And it was like this new opportunity for me to like, you know, compete in a totally different theater on a totally different network with new people. And I'm used to going on the challenge and having people like target me right away mm -hmm. and tee yeah. off on me because of my reputation and my background. But I'm going to the traders. I'm like, this is great. Like other than CT and Trishel, I don't, nobody knows me. Like I'm going to just be able to go mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And that wasn't the case. Yeah. Unfortunately, like, I, I mean, I came in and there was already, um, you know, a target on my back and it just so happened that they made Dan, uh, one of, <laughs> one of the traders <laughs> who just had, I mean, from day one, like from jump street, no matter what I did, that guy was going to, was going to mm -hmm. come after me. And it wasn't even necessarily, I think because I was a threat to his game, I was a threat to like his ego and his camera time because, you know, over the, over the years he's been, you know, touted as like the greatest big brother player in the history of the mm -hmm. game. I came in and was just doing my thing and I think stole a lot of the, the thunder and he didn't like that. Right. So. Yeah. He was like, oh, big bad challenge player. Although the two people who won in the end. Were challengers. I was yes. going to say, did that did You could have made it all the way to the did end. Did that sting no, more? Or are you no, happy? No, no. That, I, was, I couldn't have been more happy. Yeah. I'm like, the way that I saw it was like, we are going on this show and it's for the first time, like especially CT and myself are going to be able to go on and compete like as a unit mm -hmm. and not like against each other. Um, and we got such little respect like the challenge for whatever reason when it comes to reality competition shows gets no love mm. you're it's like oh this you one's on survivor you get respect over here Thank you. Yes. So, yeah. they made it to you know this one's on survivor made it to the end once you know this person won one time 17 years ago i'm like between me and ct i mean we have dude it's 13 wait 12 wins mm -hmm. between the two of us we've been on tv longer we've done we've done it longer and harder than any of these people and it's like when they mention it on traders we ne it's like they never mention our yeah. stats and the challenge is such an extreme show like for anybody yeah. who has watched the challenge before yeah. you know how much goes into it especially with this season coming up season 40 battle yeah. of the errors so 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 exciting yeah. because for me as a challenge fan the best seasons are when like when you guys are all yep. back together competing against each other at this point in time I saw you post with Wes last night. Um, is there still like a rivalry? Like, do you still have that come back a little bit? Or at this point, are you like, okay, it's funny. Like, I don't really care anymore. All right. So for starters, season 40, I mean, the fact that, you know, back in 2006, when I started this journey, 2006, 18 years ago. Um, yeah, I 
after I got eliminated first on my first season of the challenge, I didn't think I was ever going to be. First of all, I didn't know if I was going to ever be invited onto the challenge after my Key West season. I remember talking to one of the producers, Mark Saliga, after we wrapped Key West. And I'm like, dude, is there a shot that I'm going to be able to go on the challenge? And he's like, yeah, yeah they might they might bring you on. And then I go on and I'm eliminated first again yeah. for a different for a whole different yeah. reason. But first and then I'm like, dude, I just screwed the pooch. Dude, like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be on again. And then 24 seasons later, um, you know, here we are at season 40. Um, and also as a fan. Because even though I've been on this show for as long as I have, there are people on this show, the Era One crew, CT, Mark Long, Derek, Darrell, Brad, uh, Rachel, Anissa, mm -hmm. Katie, um, Tina, that I watched before I went on. So it was like such a like out of body, like it was it was such a cool experience from a competitor, but also as a fan to be in a house and to watch like the OGs of OGs yeah. mm -hmm. and their interactions and like watching again, it's almost like watching all stars. It was like, there was this very like mm -hmm. nostalgic, you know, awesome, um, you know, just, just, you know, part about, about being that, that experience and seeing them interact together. Um, so yeah, I was so stoked uh, to be a part of it and fans, uh, as of late, there is this ongoing debate between new school versus old school. Mm -hmm. We're sick of these old players. We want new blood. And our fans, we're sick of all these new players. We want to stick with who we know in the OGs. This season, you're going to get it all. Yeah. yeah. You're going to get from the beginning all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, may the best man and woman win. And I think this is truly going to be, you know, a battle of, you know, who... Who actually, you know, there's the who lit the torch and then who's currently carrying the torch. Yeah. I love a good mix. You yeah. know, I love like all, you know, going back to the beginning to now at this point, like, I don't even know if you can consider Tori like new because it has been years, but like yeah. a newer player, yeah. Devin, like those people are newer mm -hmm. than you guys. But at this point, not necessarily like totally new like i i like a good mix so then yeah, that's I consider like those survive like the survivor and like big brother players i feel yeah. like are like the newer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Newer like, newer like yeah like kind of like the redheaded stepchildren yeah. of the <laughs> yes. along with your boy yes. wes <laughs> uh so th but see that's the thing is this season separates out the eras right so mm -hmm. and and all of yeah, it how, makes it a lot it, easier how is it all split up so season one through ten is era one okay eleven through twenty is two 21 through 30, 31 through 40. Okay. So, gotcha. So it makes it a lot easier because that's, Four I always eras, said the same thing. Seasons. I remember when I was like nine seasons in on the challenge and I still was like, am I a vet? Like, am I an OG? Like I felt mm -hmm. uncomfortable calling myself a vet or an OG mm -hmm. because of the other people on the, on the show. Now you have people who come on two seasons and they're vets. Right. Yeah. Or they're OGs. And I'm like, man, it took a long time. We had to spill a lot of blood in the mud before we ever got that respect and before we were ever allowed to like yeah. call ourselves that. I so think now, a win really changes the, your mm -hmm. reputation yeah, too. Some does. of the newer people that like, even though they do, ha they get a win early, yeah. then I think then they're also like, well, I'm, a, I'm an OG because I have a win. Yeah, or they make it to the end of one show. I've always said the worst thing that can happen to people on the challenge is to come on their first season and make it all the way to the end. Right. Because they don't understand how difficult it right, is to right. do that. Mm -hmm. Especially now. The challenge has evolved so much over the last, you know, 23 seasons. When I when I started, it was the it was the it was the very beginning of it transitioning from being carnival games to like mm. an actual sport. And the finale was like one day. Yeah. Now it's week a week long. It's smearing on it's, it's like the amazing yeah. race. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like sm smear paint on this canvas and roll around or on your body and roll around on this canvas or walk on a treadmill with itching powder. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Katie Doyle did an elimination smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how like it used to be. Then yeah. Yeah. it transitioned then into what it is today, which is, mm. it literally is a fucking sport. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's insane. So, you know, I've been there like through again, through that transition. And now there's so much parody in the game where, you could come in and you could be the best athlete with the greatest strategy, but if there's not some luck, some element of luck on your side, you're not going to make it to the end. So like just making it to the end for me at this point, it's like a win because I mean, I go in with a huge target on my back. This season obviously is no different. Um, and I just have to kind of go to, you know, clock in yeah. day one, go to work and, you know, try to make it through all the twists and turns that they throw at mm -hmm. us. What was the last season you did before this one? Uh, the last one was Challenge USA okay. in, in in Croatia. 
Okay. So that was the mm-hmm. CBS, the second version yeah, of yeah, CBS yeah, Challenge. Yeah, yeah. And before that was... I get a little confused. You get confused. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, which one is on MTV? Which <laughs> okay. one is on CBS? Dude, what, which one's on Paramount? Who's on... What's on this one? Oh, what's, who's on you this one? You and me one? both. I'm like, <laughs> I can't even keep track. Like, I'll yeah. literally sit there and they'll be like, oh yeah, this... I'm like... I don't remember. They're like, you were on that season. I'm like, yeah. yeah. It all blends together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one big weird bad dream. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a way to prepare now for the challenge? Um, I mean, so from a physical standpoint, I mean, listen, I'm 42 now, so I can't, I, I just don't have the ability to like, you know, rebound the way that I used to. So I really have to like listen to my body now. Um, and so I, I'm not able to, I guess, prepare physically the way that I used to. I used to work out like every day. Now it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I got to pick and choose when I do it. Um, but for me, it's like, I mean, you just, you, you there's nothing you can, you just got to be prepared for anything, mm-hmm. um, which is, I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but it's like, you don't know what the hell they're going to throw at you. Mm-hmm. You don't know what the format's going to be. You don't know what the game is going to be. Um, you don't know, you know, who's going to be there or how the, you know, the voting situation is going to break down. So I go in and I'm just. I don't make. Pre, I don't have pre. Yeah, they come up with new things every season that you can't even wrap your head around. Yeah. And yeah, I don't go in with the plan. I just go yeah. in. I'm just. I'm just adapt to whatever they right. throw at me. Now going back, obviously the, one of the most talked about moments for you is when you took all the money, right? Oh, I thought you were gonna say the backpack because <laughs> you guys love to play that clip. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. We'll get it out of the way. I mean, obviously the CT backpack. Iconic, but Cue it um, up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely now we're gonna make only a clip where it's just on. Repeat. I think it should be the whole podcast. <laughs> it's just on repeat, on repeat. You getting carried. Thank you. Um, yes. You taking the money. Mm-hmm. Do you ever like when you're laying in bed at night? No. <laughs> Regret it? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask. Are you ever laying down and you're like, no. oh, I shouldn't no. have done that. No. No. It I, was. I, I mean. No. Oh, you knocked down our Zac Efron star. Not Zac Efron. Not Zac Efron. Not Zac Efron. Not Zac Efron. Careful. Okay. See, you're getting nervous yeah. now. Zac Efron get a fucking star. Because he I don't is think a he gets threat. the respect that he deserves He's a star. a star. He actually took an Emmy from me for hosting, so. <laughs> yeah, for my travel show. He's not even a travel host, and somehow he beat me out for he a daytime Emmy. He had that show. That was his Netflix show. Netflix show. That was not a Netflix show. That was him just trying to not party and drink <laughs> and and do bad and make bad decisions. So like, we're just going to send you around the world to dry you out. He had a travel show. I And he won. All right, all right. Good, um, good for him. So, so no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. I mean. <laughs> Not one. Never. Here's why. Okay. This is what a lot of people don't. And I'm glad they're finally, you know, especially like MTV. They actually posted a clip. I day, respect which they the very, move. Really, thank you. Like it's one of the best moves. And I respect that you respect. I respect that you respect It's a big ass diamond. You can't lift your arm up. You're like, oh. It's really weighed down. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> um, so people know about the move. It's almost like in football when the guy that retaliates gets the, the penalty, mm-hmm. but they don't see what the first guy did. Yeah. They yeah. never see what happened first. And that's what ha- that's what's been the biggest. I've never taken issue with the fact that people disagree that I took the money. Okay. I take exceptions to the fact, though, that people don't understand that it was a retaliatory action. She struck first and I just retaliated. You finished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you know anything about me and when it comes to just pranks in general, you prank up. Mm-hmm. You don't you prank taking down. the money was a prank. Prank up. <laughs> if you get me, it was just one giant goof. It, it was just a prank. A big, <laughs> gotcha. Chill yeah. out. <laughs> you toilet paper my house. I'm gonna fucking light your car on fire. Yeah. yeah. Now, can you explain for the people who maybe don't know the back? So, like you said, people just know the retaliation. They yeah. don't know what came before. Can you just give like a summed up? Yes. Version. So basically, me and Sarah had been friends for years, dude. She hadn't done a season in a while, but when she had first started, I mean, we took her under our wing, uh, really helped her out, really just kind of like, you know, helped her navigate the landscape. Um, And then she took a few seasons off. uh, And then her first season back was X's, uh, X's 2. We knew going in who who we were going to be paired up with. Jordan at the time, I hated. Me and Jordan could not fucking stand each other. Um, he was new to the game, very cocky, very arrogant, very pompous. Not much has changed. Um, <laughs> so going in, I'm like, we had just had a big, you know, me and him a battle the, the prior season in elimination. We'd gone at it. So I, he was not on my good side. Mm-hmm. Sarah and him are going to be paired up now going into X's. So she hits me up before the season. We were working out together and stuff, training for it. She goes, will you please put your differences aside with Jordan for me? Because we're friends. 
so going in, I'm like, Sarah, for you, I will do this. So I put my differences aside with him. We worked hand in glove the entire season. In fact, if it wasn't for me coming back, because we Nani and I got eliminated, went to redemption, fought our way back into the game. Jordan and Sarah were at the bottom of the totem pole. We can't say a totem pole anymore. They were at the bottom <laughs> of the they're at the bottom of the list. Um, so we came back in and we managed to then flip the whole script and then by nature of me coming back in, basically put them back in a safety position, right? So we'd been working the entire season as allies, okay? The plan from the beginning was Sarah Jordan, me, Nani, Leroy, and Naya are the three that, they're the alliance that we're going to fight, rock till the end. Mm -hmm. Jenna and Jay were our layup, our insurance policy. When we get to the last elimination, the last challenge, whoever loses goes against Jenna and Jay because that'll be the best shot of all three teams making it to the final. Mm -hmm. That was the understanding we all went into it with. Until Sarah and Jordan end up winning the final challenge. She then sees this opportunity, Leroy loses. She then sees this opportunity to basically get rid of me so she'd have an easier mm -hmm. shot in the final, which is exactly what she did. Um, so by doing that then, it ended up sending me in against my best friend. I ended up going to a pretty brutal elimination against him. I separated my ribs. Like, it was gnarly. Like, it was a... And it was such a gut punch, dude, because I was like, yo, like I was riding with you the, this entire season. Yeah. If this was your plan all along, or if you wanted to, then you should have let me know. Mm -hmm. So um, I just felt betrayed. I felt very betrayed uh, by a friend. And, um, you know, hell hath no fury like a banana scorned. So mm -hmm. I, didn't, I knew I was going to get my revenge one day. I just didn't know it was going to be just that didn't as fucking know sweet as it was. And you just didn't know it was going to be like tossed up in the air for oh, you. Oh, dude, just it was so right great. Like, park. Here's the thing. If you want to be mad at anyone, be mad at production for putting that twist in. Right. All I did, <laughs> all I did was do exactly. what so was offered. Yeah. Because it's not often that you get somebody no. with, here's the money. Do you want to split it? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, more than nine times out of ten, the people are splitting it. Yeah. Not you. It's like nine and a half times out of yeah. ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nine point seven five times yeah. out of ten. Yeah. But here's the deal. Had she not done that to me first, well, A, we wouldn't have come in as rivals. Because that was mm -hmm. the season was called rivals. We wouldn't have come in as rivals, A. But B, I wouldn't have done that. I forget it was called Rivals, right? Yes. Okay, so that's kind of a poetic ending to a season called Rivals. <sighs> Let me take the money and run. And listen, <laughs> there was three teams that had the opportunity to do it. Devin and Cheyenne, my cousin Vince and Jenna, me and Sarah. Mm -hmm. When TJ announced what the twist was in the beginning of the final, you can see both the other teams like laugh. They were like, there's no fucking way I'm going to take the money. Sarah and I's reaction was, identical we both we didn't look at each other and we both kind of <laughs> stared at the ground because both of us were going to do it right, i think she right, probably right. would have done and it she too. tries to say she wouldn't have done it no it's she totally so done it's it. so easy to say yeah. i wouldn't yeah, have done it's that so easy because to be like, oh my god i would have never done it yeah, yeah because yeah. It's because revisionist the revisionist history good. all right yeah she definitely would have i yeah. just struck first dude. it is a funny aspect now that they have baked into a bunch of different uh reality shows too where it's like Here's the envelope. Whoever gets the like, they do it. At, they do it in Love Island, yeah. which is a funny twist because <laughs> Love Island obviously is based on actually like romantic relationships. Oh god! So it's like the thought that somebody at the end would win and then take the money for themselves completely is crazy. And it had. It's actually I. It has happened on Love Island Australia, and it was fucking wild. It's almost like I'm breaking up with you, and my way yes. of telling you is yeah. I'm taking the money. Yeah, yeah. speaking yeah. Of, like a divorce. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Right. It was crazy. I'm but taking that's the like house. Was, I'm taking the kid. Yeah. It's like a, almost a secondary thought because the it's like the winners of Love Island do get money and they do have the opportunity to split or somebody keep the whole thing, but they always split it. They always split it. Yeah. Speaking of Love Island, Bula. Bula. We, we all just went to Fiji. We were all just Fuck, in look Fiji. at these tans, right? Bro. I know. We got we the best tan. Let's see, Franny. Put your arm in here. Oh, can you guys lift those arms up with those yeah. rings? Uh, I don't know. Rhea's, Rhea's got a little Jersey Shore mixed yeah, in. Yeah, see, that's, Jersey that's Shore not mixed fair. In. Yeah, I feel like well, I got a little like Florida mixed in. Slightly, so. slightly ahead there. Um, yeah. You were there right before us. I know. We had just missed. Yeah. Bummer. How did you end up there? So <laughs> Who invited you? How did you get involved? I was just, I was traveling around. Um, I was in backpacking in Fiji. Uh, I was hiking through this fucking mountain, and I saw this place that looked like Never Neverland, and they wouldn't let me in, and they were just like, "No, you just go up 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 on top of this hill and talk about it instead." <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know somebody at, at <laughs> I, I, I've got a really good friend uh, at um, Peacock. 
mm-hmm. who basically told me a while ago, she's like, hey, would we kind of would like to get you on Love Island Games. We think that would be a great oh platform or transition God. for you to go from like being on the challenge, right? And then going and competing on Love Island Games because that's kind of like right in your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it would make zero sense to put you in the fucking villa. So <laughs> yeah, funny. regular. It would have been Island. great. I told them this on After Sun. They were like, oh, would you have gone in? I'm like, okay, after watching the last five episodes, because I didn't watch any of the season until I got there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just catch up. No, I'm thinking it's like a regular show. I'm like, no, oh, no, I missed no. maybe three or four episodes. No, no, They're no, like, no, you're 17 episodes, episodes yeah, yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh shit, dude. So I should probably watch mm-hmm. some. They're like, all right, we're just going to let you watch the last like five yeah. before Casa. Yep. Um, and that's why they brought me in for Casa because this is going to be a very dramatic moment. Like we want your take on it. So I binged like six episodes in like 24 hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never had that's worse. nothing. I've never had not that impressive. Six in 24 hours. Or maybe it was I mean, like, we've clocked, clocked about I've like clocked eight, nine, yeah. right. twelve. Well, I'm not yeah. a reality television <laughs> watcher. So, and I literally had it gave me anxiety. Like I uh, yeah. needed a Xanax after mm-hmm. watching that N- because I'm like. What they are putting these yeah. people through is it's psychological diabolical yeah. on another level. Yeah. And coming from me, somebody that has been literally psychologically tortured in the past, I lived in a bunker underground for 10 weeks in the Czech Republic, an anti aircraft oh missile bunker <laughs> with yeah. no oxygen and no wow. sunlight. Like, and dude, so like, and I have to wake up every morning and look at Wes Bergman's face. Like, dude, that's torture in itself. But, the thing the difference with the challenge is there's not as much like producer like producer interference i guess love island they were like how can we set these people up to make horrible decisions that are 100% part of the recipe and mm-hmm. then when they do it rake them over the coals for doing it and expose <laughs> yep. them for doing exact and this is what i said on 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 after sun i'm like cuz all the you know uh selly mora mm-hmm. uh they were like oh my god you know, Cordell and Aaron are such assholes. How can they do this? I'm like, guys, these boys, they're in, they're 22 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It would be like giving a 16-year-old the keys to a Lamborghini and be like, <laughs> drive the speed limit. Like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, they set them up. They, you put these guys in a house. They meet a girl. They're in a relationship for a week. Then they're like slowly removed and then yeah. put in this other house with a bunch of a new group of hot girls yeah. who are all doing everything they can to get these guys to break yeah, it they, off with their they other, have to get on the show because they want to get yeah, back yeah. into the villa and then they record it <laughs> and then they send it to their significant others and then they make them come back into the house dude i was when they were you just mind blown watching this fuck, mind blown. <laughs> blown i was watching this and i was like oh my because they asked me that was one of the first questions they were like would you ever do this i'm like absolutely not so but would you do love island games i do has, love island, love game. island but games it has, is totally it different. has a little bit, bit of both whatever though. it has the but see that has more of the competition aspect yeah and it's like the whole Pur- the whole purpose of Love Island is to go and find love. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's not gonna happen for me. So I would go on, and it would. I'd obviously focus on more of the competition. Is that just aspect. out of the question for you? Love, like, set, yeah, settling down. <sighs> I don't know, <laughs> man. I feel like I'm gonna for you guys. I feel like I'm forever gonna be like the bridesmaid. You know what I mean? Like watching oh. all my friends settle down and get married, <laughs> and then. I don't and know, do you I, feel like sad about that, or is or are you okay with that? So okay, here here here's what it is the point that I'm at right now in my life and my career. I have so much going on and there is so much that happens on a daily basis i mean dude just in the last i was telling you guys the last two months i was yeah. in vietnam the philippines then home for less than two weeks saint martin then fiji now i'm here doing press i fly to la tomorrow to do more press mm-hmm. and then i come back here for the premiere and then i've got another show coming up in a few months so it's like i feel like i'd be doing anyone that i was in a relationship it's the same reason I don't have an animal. I don't even mm-hmm. have time for a dog. Like you feel yeah. like you'd be you're you're selfish, but for good yeah, reason. But you like know, for ev- busy eventually, reasons. Eventually I will die down. alone. Ev- yeah, but no, mm. I'm saying eventually that you know, maybe the shows will slow they down. They will and, and I will too. You know what? It's here's the way I look at it. Right now where I'm at, I feel like I've asked for where I'm at for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why I fucking grinded it out on the challenge for 15 16 years Mm -hmm. to finally get to a place where i've created enough of a brand and enough of you know just um just a persona to where Mm -hmm. then i could 
use that as a platform to leapfrog and to like, you know, delve into other areas and other shows and other parts mm -hmm. of the entertainment industry. Now that I'm here, it's so much and it's coming so fast, but I tell myself, like, this is what I asked for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I've, this is why this I've why foregone. I look at other guys on the uh, the challenge and it's like, there's guys who've been married, they have kids, they've like settled down. They've, Leroy, mm -hmm. yeah. my mm -hmm. best friend, he's got two kids now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, engaged to, to get married. And I'm like, I'm watching the guys. Like, I'm like, damn, dude, if he's even like, like yeah. settled down. But, but it worked the show. It, it yeah. all worked. It does. Yeah. You so, know, it's that they, that's where it happened for him. I yeah. know. I know. So for me, <laughs> um, for me, like, I just look at it like right now, I just need to focus 100% on. Like my career on and what and, you've built and, and what I built and what I'm trying to continue to build because you know as well as I do it's like this industry is so fickle yeah mm -hmm. it moves, like, fast. moves yep. fast there's always yep. new people coming in new yep. personalities yeah. if you were to settle down with somebody would it be somebody who like works in sort of the same industry as you so they kind of understand like it's never going to be over yeah. for you it might slow down yeah or do you want someone who is like totally removed? So I get this question a lot and it's like, it, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. If you're with someone that's in the industry, <clears throat> they understand better mm -hmm. like the, the ebb and flow yeah. of like what we have to do. Like, yeah, I go away for 10 weeks and I'm, and I'm filming. But if you understand what that is, it's not me running around fucking naked yeah. around mm -hmm. the house for 10 weeks. It's yeah. like, dude, yeah. it's, it's a mental... Mm -hmm. you know and, and and strategic you know mind fuck but then it's like so they will get that and a lot of times like people in, in the entertainment industry have a very open and loose schedule like me mm -hmm. so they're able to travel and you know kind of yeah. you know do the same thing but like but then it's also they're so tapped in anything and everything you do yeah. they're like aware of it yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i do have to i mean just based on who i am and my and you know i have to kind of be a little bit of an eccentric you know over the top version of myself. So a lot of people don't have the ability to like handle that. So mm -hmm. the answer to your question is, I don't know. Uh, I tend to run away from green flags and run towards red flags mm -hmm. like a bull. Yeah. Uh, I gotta stop doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware. Yeah. But I'm probably not going to anytime soon. <laughs> you're not looking to settle down. So no. yeah, you don't no. have to run towards the green no. flags yeah. right now. No. Um, no. When you're alone, do you talk to yourself? <laughs> like, do I have an internal monologue? <laughs> like, like no. Because I have, like, I'm talking to myself in my brain okay. at all times, probably. Yeah. Are you talking out loud? I, I never you talk to be, out loud. I picture you to be somebody who's mm -mm. talking out loud at home. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I like have an internal monologue is like if I take it like an edible or something. Wait, so yeah, you okay. don't talk to yourself no. in your brain? No. It's just nothing? I just talk out loud. All I talk so much out loud that I need some peace and quiet in my brain so I can't also yes. take Shut up, up quiet a little time bit. with yeah. talking to myself. But when you're world. alone and you're like watching a show or something... <laughs> No thinking. Just Sometimes if something really, if something really crazy happens, I'll have like an audible like reaction to yeah. it. Like what the fuck? Right. Like Aaron, how good you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but it's not in here. No, it's I don't. People Do have you? To ask that. There's this. Yeah, is, I always have. My a, brain's always going. Yeah, I feel like it's a debate people have. Where like some people just have not. Like they're mm -hmm. just no, 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 going. No, I am. I'm. I feel like I always constantly, constantly, constantly have talking to myself or thinking in my brain. You I'm constantly con have thoughts. Yeah, well, thoughts I have. No, yeah. but like I always yes. have thoughts, but, yeah. I, but I'm not. Sorry, I'm, I'm not, not wording correctly. I'm okay. not constantly talking to myself in my brain. Okay, I'm just constantly thinking about yes. something. Okay, like some people Correct. are sometimes not thinking about anything. Okay, no, I always think about stuff. Which yeah, <laughs> it's actually a problem because that's why I do so many like ta like I'm always doing tasks and busy mm -hmm. work and shit because an idle mind like will drive me crazy yeah mm -hmm. so that's why i'm always doing stuff to like try and like you know keep my mind busy keep it sharp for keep it sharp man yeah keep it yeah keep it keep it tight keep it right um is yellow your favorite color um it's not i just figured i just realized very recently that i could match green with yellow Mm, yeah because your watch also has yellow in it yeah that's uh, i mean you know it kind of goes with the whole like banana you just thing. thought mm -hmm. that about green and I yellow know that you can match. I'm really bad with I'm really bad with fashion. Yeah, um, you wouldn't know it. Based <laughs> you wear on, a lot of like Johnny all, Bananas branded. I have merch. to. <laughs> Don't you guys wear barstool merch? Yeah. Okay, you have to. <laughs> we wear it's your brand. We wear our own stuff. It's a brand. Yes, you wear your own stuff. No, I respect it. I'm just you're you. you have a, a good matching going on right now. Hey. Yellow shoes, yellow watch yeah. with the yellow Thanks, shirt. Man. I yep. picked this out myself. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Yeah, but I didn't know you could match green with yellow until actually last season, Michelle on the show was wearing green with yellow. And I'm like, oh my God, you can fucking. <laughs> You're like, wow, that works. You're like, nobody I'll told do- me those colors look good together. I'm not even kidding. Sometimes if I like have like a shirt or a pair of pants I haven't worn in a while, I'll literally Google like gray shirt. Pant, what pants should I wear with a gray shirt? <laughs> I yeah. respect that though. No, at, at least, least you're, you're thinking, thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Least, he's gonna say, at least you're, you're thinking, thinking about, about it. it. When did the pinky rings come into mix? Um, when I got when, when I became um, a mafia made man, mm-hmm. uh, they said this is something that you're gonna have you to, have to do. wear. Yep. Um, yeah. Pinky so ever since then, after yeah, so yeah. now it's I'm kind of stuck doing it. Like if I take them off, I might get, I might mm-hmm. get whacked. Do you yeah. um? Does anybody in your family wear pinky rings? No. They should start. My, you, my grandpa wears one. It's, yeah. pretty, it's a strong pretty, move. Yeah, pretty sad. Yeah. I need to get one. I mean, I lose a lot of my stuff, so I didn't want to buy anything too expensive, but I need to get one with like a diamond in it or yeah. something. Yeah. You know? He's got like a... I Is think it gold? It, yeah, it's gold. That's sick. Yeah. It's yeah. got a... It's an... I think it... Is either has an, just an M or like all three of his initials. Oh, that's pretty yeah. sick. Like a my Tulsa. brother has his eye on it. <laughs> he, should. he should. They have the same name. How, yeah. how big are your grandpa's fingers though? Small. He's a small man. Okay. He's a small. Because a lot I'm of like because yeah. a lot of old Italian guys have like sausage fingers. Yeah, they do. Like they my do. dad's like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I look at my yeah. dad's hands to this day, and I'm like, Dad, you have yeah. like, You're like what happened mm-hmm. here? Yeah, what my hands just all stopped the work growing. they were putting yeah. in. I guess. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, okay. Wait. I want. I wanted to ask about forty again because split into eras so there's only obviously so many people per era going in were you pumped or not pumped about the rest of the people in your era and were you like oh is this good or bad for me okay here's the okay so there's there's like multiple angles to this right when i first saw the lineup i looked at the guys on my squad yeah and i'm like we're fucked (laughs) (laughs) okay yeah i'm like all right so and nothing against them. It's just they all their body of work is. I mean, you have Ryan, you have Ryan and Brandon who have not been on a challenge mm-hmm. in a while, other than yeah. like all stars. Because you're also going if you're going off errors, you're also going by age. Yep. Yeah. That's true. And I literally, when I looked back and I saw, wait a minute, in my era, so seasons ten through twenty, like I really carried a fucking massive torch because I didn't really have a lot of role players to help me from my era yeah. through that. There wasn't a lot of big names or big faces in my era um, that, you know, helped me kind of like carry the torch through that. But then when I realized, I was like, wait a minute, I might be having to go into eliminations against my own era. Mm. Then I was happy again. Cause okay. then I looked at era one, CT, the rel, Derek, Brad, no thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, er, dude, era four, you've got Theo, Kylie, yeah. mm-hmm. um, uh, Horacio yeah, 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 uh, era yeah, three yeah. you got you know Jordan um, uh, Leroy Tony so I'm like alright this is great because if I have to go into eliminations these are obviously the guys I'd rather go in against then I looked at the females on our squad which are like the goddamn Avengers right mm-hmm. Laurel Emily mm-hmm. who came out of retirement she you know she's been cruising around the United States in a van with her cat so I'm glad she came back <laughs> mm-hmm. to the challenge love you M uh, Laurel mm-hmm. Cara Maria um, Kellyanne, like stacked, dude. Like, yeah. I don't think there's ever been a female squad that's that strong. And a lot of times on the challenge, you're the, the females are what help, are, are what help you win. Mm-hmm. Um, Laurel so, was super intimidating. Yeah, dude. What you see this season? <laughs> we and we bet we shared like so our beds were right next to each other mm-hmm. this season, and this is the first time I've spent as much time with her. Um, I, we've always been friends, but this is the first time her and I spent like the amount of time we did together. Mm-hmm. And dude, it's so funny. She, who did she date again? Who was oh, it? Car? Nicole. Okay. Nicole. Okay. I was like, it wasn't Car Maria. It wasn't Car. They've just been. They've got a very tumultuous, up and down, uh, volatile. Then there was a past season, somewhat, somewhat recently that she, am I? And I think it was. She had like a fling with them. Um, yeah, with her, Nicole. With her, no, no, there was somebody else. Jordan. No. Mm, it was one of the new. Bear? It was one of the new guys. One of the new newer guys. Hmm. I could be talking out of my ass right now. Yeah, but I think maybe. it was Laurel. Didn't she and like Horacio have like a? Yes, like a, that's right. And, and like it was like I was kind of like this yes. is a weird dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. They had a totally. Had a, it was yeah, one was of on, like the mm-hmm. that was on Ride or Dies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, yeah. 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 They yep, did. They yep. had. They had a little. They had a little thing. Yep. And then. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of canoodling going on um, yeah. in that season. Uh, yeah, there was, there was, there was. But yeah, was th- there canoodling this season? Oh my god, such a horny cast. 
Really? Not me. Love it. Because I, because I would think like, I guess now, like with the eras, I'm thinking like they all have respect for the game and they're like, we're not here to mess around. Like we're no, here every, no the shot. Game. Everybody's I mean, horny. When still. you throw them all in a no house, no <laughs> shot. Well, it's funny because you will see there is a divide in the house. Mm -hmm. It's almost like era one, era two is more like old school. Mm -hmm. Era three, era four is newer school. Yeah. We've made all the bad decisions. We've done that. All right. Yeah. I've touched the stove a couple times and mm -hmm. I had to remind myself how fucking hot it was and not to do it again. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, but I like watching other people make terrible decisions mm -hmm. and get themselves involved in these showmances that yeah. you know are not going to last outside mm -hmm. and are just going to be an absolute train wreck. Um, I love so, to see them. I love to see. The, it always has a good And it's element. always the newer people too because yeah. the newer people get so excited. Like I think Olivia... And Theo. And Theo mm -hmm. are together. Yep. And when I yeah. saw that, I saw her like TikToks with him and I was like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, they met on the what? show. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They leave together. Yep. She gets his name tattooed on her neck. Oh my God. Amazing. After a very short time of dating. But this is, okay. And you know what? This is one of the parallels that Love I Love Island. Drawing. She's Love Island. Exactly. <laughs> and this is one of the parallels that I drew to Love Island on the challenge. This is what most people don't understand is kind of like, and it's funny because I listened to uh, KFC's, you know, One Minute Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, his, his, and he, it's so funny because him and I actually started texting because we both somehow got involved in Love Island. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to his hot takes on it. And I'm like, bro, you're so right. We call it on the challenge, we call it trauma bonding. And when, and, and when you are in a house with somebody for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, 10 weeks, the amount of time that you're spending with these people is the equivalent, like Kevin said, of like 50 to 100 dates that you've right, done with right. these people. I've been told in the past, it's like once you've spent 100 hours with somebody, it's like your relationship, it goes from being like, oh yeah, you know, we can hang out one weekend and I can not hear from you for a week and it, it'll be fine yeah. to what are you doing? Who are you hanging out with? Yep. Like I actually have feelings for you. If mm -hmm. I see you with somebody else, this is going to be a problem. Yep. That happens so quickly on these reality television yeah. shows and it's by design. Yes, mm -hmm. and you become so close and then you start feeling yeah. like these emotions that you have are so real because on top of the amount of time you're spending with them there's also this element of like emotional pressure and strain and psychological pressure and mm -hmm. when you're with somebody going through that it like and then there's intimacy involved it bonds you in a different way mm -hmm. so and also being cut off from the outside world exactly. like you have no access to the outside world yeah. they're all you have yeah it's the only person you could talk to and you think that because you're in this house together, your schedule is the same every day. You wake up, mm. you hang out with the same people, you do the same stuff. You're like, oh my God, we're so compatible. Not realizing that, right. no, this is an artificial reality. Once you're in the outside world, a lot of times it doesn't withstand the test of time. Again, I've learned that the hard way a couple of times. We'll never do it again. Uh, but I, <laughs> that's why Love Island was like, it, it's like that on steroids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the challenge does that, but nowhere near the extent that Love Island does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. so intense. And then it, so it kind of makes you realize like, oh, this is why they're making these decisions. Totally. Because it's so amplified. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see what happens for season four. I'm really excited for this season. Uh, I just love like, I like being familiar with the people I'm watching, even if yes. it's new, old, all around. It's going to be fantastic. The best. That's when it's yes. That's when this it's is literally be the, best the, best. the best. This is the best of the best, and that's yep. why it's going to be great TV. Yep, exactly. And it comes back August 14th, yeah. Wednesday nights. Yep. Uh, thank Amazing. you so much MTV. for coming back, Johnny. MTV. I'll be back in the city for the uh, premiere. So I don't know what you guys are up to, but mm -hmm. if you guys want to come check it out, that might be fun. Oh my god, I would love to. Um, all right, yeah, but thanks for having me on. Love you guys. Yeah, we love you. Love too. you, Thank best you so friend. For thanks back. for coming back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me back. It'll be two more years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Hey, maybe, maybe for season maybe 50. we'll all go to Fiji together next. <laughs> maybe year. you guys could come on my podcast next. Oh, yeah. uh, well, the if you death, us. taxes and bananas podcast. Yes, if you invite us, we'll next time in the city. So I record out of the Spotify studio in the trades in World Trade Center. So just invite us and we're there. I will. Great. Okay. Sounds mm. great. <laughs> and next time I come, my face would better be on this fucking stuff. No, we do not, not touch that. Be Zach. Zach Efron.